Hi, this video is a demonstration of this box I built called the IV Swinger. It's an IV curve tracer for photovoltaic solar panels. Um, I built this one for my friend Gil Masters to use in his CEE 176B course that he teaches at Stanford University. Uh, this is the only one in existence for now, but I do plan on putting information online that would hopefully allow other people to replicate it. Um, if you don't know what an IV curve is or what they're useful for, um, I'll be posting another video with some background information. Um, I also plan on posting another video with some more explanation on how I designed and built the IV Swinger. This video is really just to show what it does and how to use it. Okay, before we go ahead and hook it up and give it a try, I'll just show you what uh, some of the parts are on the box. Um, here on the left side, we've got the cables cut that uh, go to the solar panel and on the right side here we've got some USB ports here these are uh, actually just the ports on the Raspberry Pi computer that's the the brains in the in the box um, that's where you'll plug in your USB flash drive that where all the results will get written um, also on this end there is battery charger port which is important it's just a standard micro USB battery charger port. Um, on the front here, we've got this button, which is actually on the battery pack itself. Um, that, when you push that, that powers it on and starts it booting. Um, right above that, there's this push button. That's actually used to, uh, to gracefully shut down the, the computer. Um, and, and on the top here, got this switch. This is what actually closes the circuit um, from the solar panel and sends the current through the box initially through just a short circuit path and then one by one the software selects a different load um, to generate the different points on the graph. Next to that you've got this LCD panel that will give you some messages about what it wants you to do and some information about what it's doing. Um, that's about it for the sort of user interface. Um, these coils here are <laughs> the actual load. Um, they're really just coffee or tea heating coils. Um, there are a few power resistors under here that are used um, at the sort of tail end of the curve. Uh, those blue things under there are relays, which is what the uh, what the computer uses to switch in or out of the circuit each of the loads. Um, I think that's about all the detail I'll go into now in this. My other video will have more detail. So let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, now I've got the IV swinger here in the shade underneath the panel. That's mostly so that the video will look better, but um, it's actually not a bad idea to keep it shaded if possible, just to keep it cool. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is insert a USB flash drive into one of the ports. Uh, there are four ports, so you can put up to four of them in and they'll all get the same data written to them. Next, we're gonna wanna hook up the panel. If you've got the standard connectors, it's pretty foolproof as far as which one goes where. If you don't have standard connectors and are just connecting it with alligator clips or something like that, just make sure you've got the positive uh, cable from the panel connected to the positive terminal of the IV swinger. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and, and start booting, power it on. That's this bottom button, as I said, on the battery pack. Press that. And you can see the LCD illuminates to so get a little light on the Raspberry Pi. Um, and it takes about 30 seconds until it's fully booted and up. So we'll just take a break here. Okay, now you get this welcome message, welcome to IV swinger. And then you'll see a message that says, turn the switch on to begin the IV curve tracing. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And turn the switch off, 191 watts max. During that process, you may have noticed the LEDs um, going on in sequence on the relays, which are what are selecting the loads. Uh, at this point, we've got 
a name displays the name of a folder that's really just the date and time um, and <clears throat> that will tell you where it is on the USB drive it's under a top level folder called IV Swinger um, you may want to jot that down if you're doing multiple experiments and you want to make sure you remember which one was which um, at this point it's ready for another measurement so you can actually disconnect it connect it to different panel uh, change the conditions angle shading uh, you may want to do it as it heats up to show the effective temperature that kind of thing what I'm gonna do right now I'm just gonna place my hand you can't see this in the video but I'm just placing my hand over one of the cells and covering as much as my hand covers just just one of the cells on the uh, the panel and then we'll turn it on again this time you may want to watch for the LEDs down there see click 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 done see that's down to 130 watts so <laughs> lost a pretty substantial amount of power just by covering up one cell so now you can continue on taking more measurements for the video that's it um, last thing I'm going to show is just how we shut it down which as I mentioned you want to do that gracefully by pressing this button here you have to hold it for three seconds time requirement is only uh, <clears throat> Oops, I released it, but the time requirement of three seconds is just to make sure that you don't bump it and shut it down by mistake. So now it's shutting down. Um, there are little LEDs that you probably can't see on the video on the battery pack. They're, they're going to be the first to blink out. Okay, they're out. That means the shutdowns happen. There's some residual power that keeps the LCD illuminated for a few seconds, and you'll see that LED on the Raspberry Pi. But as soon as those go out, it's definitely, it's probably safe to take it out way before that, but you can remove this. And now we'll go ahead and pop this in a laptop and see what the results look like. Okay, here's my laptop. Um, I'm gonna take the USB drive that I took out of the IV Swinger and pop it in. And I'm gonna open that up. You'll see that there's this folder uh, at the top level of that USB drive called IV Swinger along with whatever else you already had on your drive. I'm going to open that up and we'll see these <laughs> folders that are named for a date and time. Uh, these are the ones that the IV Swinger uh, display, the names of which it displayed on the LCD. Uh, these are two earlier ones. The two that we saw in the video were these, these two here. So I'm going to open up this one which is the first one that we did. And you'll see four files in here. These two middle files are not going to be very interesting to you. They were just used uh, to generate this PDF file using the new plot program on the Raspberry Pi. Um, this file is a CSV file. That's a comma separated value file, which uh, you can pull into any spreadsheet program. Uh, the PDF is uh, a graph that was generated by the IV Swinger. It gives you a quick look. It may not be what you ultimately want. Um, which you might have to do in, in the spreadsheet, but definitely gets you a quick look at what the graph looks at like. So this is that first case, complete sun, nice and pretty, um, just what it's supposed to look like. Um, I can point out up here, this, this point that's on the, the vertical axis is the point uh, called the short circuit current point because the voltage is zero. So that's the amount of current that the panel generates when there is no resistance between the, the, two, um, the two terminals. Then on the other end, this is the open circuit voltage. And that's the voltage that generates um, when there's no connection between the two terminals. And in general, the, this current value is gonna vary depending on uh, the insulation on the, the panel, which is the, the amount of sun energy per area. Um, so it's going to go up and down depending on how, how bright the sun is or what angle it's at or how uh, much atmosphere has to go through and that sort of thing. The voltage doesn't vary as much, but it does vary with temperature. Um, it goes down with temperature, so you actually lose power with temperature. This point here is the maximum power point. You can see it's actually right on one of the measured points. Um, that really is only because this is doing 
linear interpolation between the between the points. Um, and even with linear interpolation, though, sometimes the maximum power point is between, and the, the software does calculate that correctly. Um, but in this case, the maximum power is the, power is the, the product of the current and the voltage. So amps times volts equals watts. This is 191.48 watts. Um, so that's about all we can say about this. Nice, beautiful curve. I'll just show you what it's like to open this file up. CSV files will just naturally open your spreadsheet program on most computers. Uh, you can see there are actually four columns in here. We have the volts and the amps, but the IV swinger also calculates watts and, and ohms for you. Um, and so this isn't really a Excel tutorial, but I'll just sort of show like one thing you can do, supposing you wanted graph of watts on top of the IV curve also. So I'll do that. You always want to do a scatter chart for this kind of data. I'll do a smooth marked scatter chart. I'll move this onto its own tab. And you can see the scale isn't very nice here because the IV curve is so flattened out. So what I'll do for that is I'll do format data series on the power curve. Put it on a secondary axis. So now we've got watts over here and amps over here. And even though the maximum power point is not marked here, you can see where it is because it's going to be where the peak of this curve is. So it looks like possibly it might be actually a little bit to the right of this point, but basically it's at this, this point here. Okay, so one more thing just to mention um, is if you've opened the CSV file, and you've added things like graphs, you don't want to save it as CSV because all that information will get lost. So do a, when you do a save as, save it as the, the actual spreadsheet format. I'm not going to save it at all. Go back up here, open this other folder, I'll open the PDF. This is the one where I put my hand over one cell. And you can see <coughs> that it is kind of ugly, um, unless you're kind of into this kind of thing, and it actually is exactly what the theory says that it should be. Um, these panels are divided up into three sub-panels, each of which has a bypass diode, so if it's shaded, it actually sort of takes it out of the circuit. And so what you see here is, is really the equivalent of two-thirds of the panel, because the one-third is not generating any power. Um, I won't explain why you get this linear point here and then why it rejoins the full power thing here. That If you're a student in Gill's class, you should know that. Um, and if you're not, you can look it up and learn some things. Um, anyway, just wanted to show you that. Last thing is just that there are these folders at the top level also CSV and PDF where it sort of contain it like the PDF contains all the PDFs just in case you want to have all the PDFs in one place instead of having to go down into each of the, the dated folders. So that's it. That's uh, my demo on the IV Swinger and I hope you enjoyed the video.